Today I'm gonna share how I like to plan our learning in the summer. I try to keep it really simple, just three low planning steps because they're approximately 92 days in summer and we like to exercise our brain muscle for some of those days. I'm going to go through the three planning steps first and then if you're interested in knowing what we're doing this summer or what I've done in the past, then you can wait until the end of the video where I'll share that and give you a little tour of our workspace. I'll also put the links of any of the resources that I share in the description below so you can find all of that down inside what it is specifically that we want the kids to learn or what they want to learn or what skills um, they're going to fine tune for that summer going into the school year. I will go into more detail about that later in the video. After we've decided what we're gonna focus on, the second thing is we set a budget and we get supplies. Summertime is the time I like to replenish all of the markers, crayons, and their school supplies and get books and things that will help them learn. Number three, or the last step, is like to designate a spot where we keep all of our books and all of our supplies in one area. So if it's, it's kind of out in the open and they know where everything is, just makes learning time easier. And I've also made a video that shows how we create a routine for our kids. Um, it's really flexible and I will link that video below. If you've made it to this part in the video, that means you're interested in seeing the details. So I'm going to show you the details of how I set all of this up. So I'm going to give you a tour of our little workspace. This is a bookshelf that I got from Ikea about nine years ago. It's still holding up and we keep all of our supplies and all of our learning things in this spot. This is our art supply caddy. So it has everything, highlighters, um, crayons, markers, colored pencils, everything that the kids need. And each one has their own little bin where they keep their books and their toolbox. These are just some of the books, which I'll go into more detail about a little bit later in this video that we are using and have used in this. Each kid has a toolbox which has specific supplies that they need when they're doing their schoolwork. So like a dry erase marker, um, scissors, erasers, pencils, and crayons. And then this trick has been so great for us. I've duct taped the tops of our markers together so we're not losing. This used to be my sewing table. It's also from Ikea. We've had it for years. It's been through like three moves. It's solid and still holding up strong. Now the kids use it as their learning table. I love it because you can fold it up really small um, or you can make it really big. So if we need a bigger learning workspace, then I can open up both sides. It's actually a dining table, but it works perfect for them. We made these art hangers ourselves. They're just pieces of wood that we attached wire to and clips so that they can hang up their artwork. Learning time lasts about 30 minutes to an hour on the weekdays. It's flexible if we're on vacation. We'll sometimes bring it, sometimes we won't. And I really just focus on two things, which is reading and writing. And of course, not 30 minutes, probably like 15 minutes because their attention span is just not that long but those are the two big things that i focused on um, in the summertime with them because i feel like if they could do if they could read and if they could write then they will be well, they will have an easier time with all of the other subjects this is the book that helped both of my kids learn how to read it's called teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons they're about 10 15 minutes long and i really like that it's hands-on so they have to like touch and move their fingers so this is a great one in the past i've gotten workbooks like this to go with their reading and writing and this just keeps it really easy for me and it's cost effective you can get one of these for like eight bucks i'll link a couple of them below um, they sell them at costco you can just pull a couple of pages out for them to work on and you guys to do together and that just just makes it easy here we're still focusing on reading and writing but we're also doing a couple of little extra things Cindy Boo really wants to focus on her typing so she's gonna be working on that and for sure this year is gonna be it's going to be math facts because it's efficient I noticed that during the school year when they're working on their math problems um, they just slow down because they have to count on their fingers so we're doing away with counting on fingers and definitely memorizing a couple of learning trips this summer. But of course, with things just starting to open up, that's been a little bit harder. I'm gonna be trying a curriculum called The Good and the Beautiful. And it, I loved it because it has 
art and poetry and literature and it incorporates nature. It's more of a Charlotte Mason style of schooling. I'm gonna give you a little look at what some of their curriculum books look like. So they have a handwriting book, which little Randy is working through. And I really just, I like that he's not just practicing writing his letters and numbers, but there are also activities where he's drawing and tracing and doing dot to dots and then writing sight words and sentences. So it all brings it together. So far, I really like their language arts and literature course books. Um, they're really good for what Cindy Boo needs, which is um, a focus on spelling and reading more challenging words and decoding them. And it has some good stories in there. So I'll give you a glimpse of that. What I love about The Good and the Beautiful is if you are don't want to purchase this whole literature book because you just need a couple of lessons or a couple of worksheets, you can download this entire book for free from their website and then you can just print out whichever lessons you want to but this was pretty inexpensive so i just ordered her the fourth grade literature book is really nice because she can do most of it by herself i do help her with the beginning part there's stories for her to read every day and challenging words that we go through and there's a poem also that is included with each lesson The level one it was a little bit more pricey for something just for summer so what i've been doing with the little guys is i've been i highlighted the lessons that i wanted to do with him and then every sunday i just print them out for him in his binder also purchased the level one reader to go with the language arts lessons and he's really liked the stories in here the pictures are cute um, and it progressively gets harder towards the end my only downside to this curriculum is i wish it had more independent practice for the kids but aside from that we've really enjoyed it my favorite thing about summer learning is that there are no deadlines we don't have to cover everything and we kind of just work at our own pace if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you all next time.